Hello everyone, and welcome to a booktube video. Um, I haven't done one of these in a long, long time, and I don't know if I actually have any of these left on my channel. I think I've maybe privated all of them? I don't really know. Anyways, this is gonna be a TBR, um, and... Oh god, hair on my lips. There's going to be a lot of TBR. To start with, though. Not this guy. So, I have read two books this year. <laughs> um, it's not a lot. And I keep looking over here at my computer, just because this is where some of my information is. So, the two books that I've read this year um, were The Hunger Games and Catching Fire. And... I'm currently in the middle of reading like four different books, but when I say that I'm not like actively reading them, I'm kind of just like picking them up when I have energy, and then putting them down when I don't. Um, that being said, I already have one that I'm probably not going to finish, which I think is a little unfortunate because there was like so much hype around this book, and I really like horror. So I was really expecting this book to be good, because people said it was good. Um, <clears throat> also, sorry for clearing my throat, I'm still struggling with post-COVID symptoms. The first book, and the one that I'm not going to finish, probably, is uh, The Troop by Nick Cutter. Um, There's a lot of trigger warnings that should go into this book. I feel like they should put trigger warnings at the start of the books, like in the first pages or something, personally. There's a lot of animal cruelty in here, and uh, I'm not a fan of that. And I went into it knowing that that was going to be the case, and this book is not exciting. This book tries, I think, to shock you with gore, and that's about it. Like, it's a gross book, but it's not really scary. Um, there's a lot of, like, really slow, like, moments where it just feels like you're trudging through sludge to get through the chapter, and for me, when it comes to horror, it shouldn't feel that way. You should always have this, like, sense of dread. You should always have... I don't know. I mean, I feel like you can obviously, um... <clears throat> juxtapose that like sense of dread with lighter moments you know stuff like that but like these don't have light moments necessarily it's just boring <laughs> it's boring and it's gross and that's about it um i think it started off being really exciting you know like it started off with a really good momentum of like ooh, things are intense things are gonna get intense things are only gonna get worse from here on out I'm gonna be honest, I don't know exactly when in this book um, it starts getting really boring, like what page, because I'm listening to the audiobook more so than I'm reading the physical book, but I'm more than halfway through and I'm so bored. <laughs> um, but I, I want to say, just based on what I'm looking at, around chapter 15 is where stuff starts to kind of go into that sludgy moment, and I don't know what chapter I'm on right now exactly, but, um, yeah. It's really boring. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it because there's not, for me, there's not a lot that I'm getting from it as a horror book, except being grossed out, and that's about it, and I don't really care for that. Like, gore in books is fine, but... I feel like if it's just, if it's just gore and there's nothing else really to it, then it's really boring and it's just gross. I, I'm going on too long about this. The book is boring and it's gross. So I'm really disappointed with the troop. Um, I was expecting a lot more from it and it let me down a lot. So probably not going to finish it because I can't get through it. That being said, let's start on the physical books in my um, TBR pile. So this TBR is basically just for the rest of the year, because <laughs> I'm clearly not very good at reading a lot of books in the year. It's um, since university, it's been something that I've struggled with. I used to be that person that would read like three to five books at a time, always having them in my bag, you know, 
<clears throat> and then university happened and it just kind of ruined reading for me. And I've really been trying to get back into my passions lately. And uh, reading is one of those things. And so I'm trying to just kind of take it slow, read like one page a day, five pages, maybe 10, um, and then kind of build momentum up from there. So just do a little reading every day, basically, to try and get back into, into reading. Um, so I don't particularly have any big goals besides just read as much as I can for the year. That being said, these are all books that I own that I need to read. So, and this isn't even all of them. This is just my immediate pile that's currently unpacked. Um, this one is really pretty. It's A Natural History of Magic by Poppy David and Jessica Rue. It's really pretty. It also has little gold edges, which I didn't notice the first time. This is a kid's book. <laughs> but it's so pretty. Like, it's a picture book on magic. All different kinds of magic. And it's just like, it's such a pretty book. Like, look at all this stuff. Look at it. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And it's informative, I think. And like, so far, um, it does kind of have a story because it starts off with um, some dude writing to you. And you're supposed to be like his grandson or grand person. <laughs> yeah, but in the book, the person that wrote this book like, in the fictional form, um, this dude is supposedly the one that wrote this whole book, right? And he's writing to his grandson, his grandson Alfie, about magic. And that's basically what the story behind this whole thing is, so it's, it's basically just narrated, the history of magic is narrated by that character to his grandson. And I think that's really awesome. It's a really pretty book. It's, like, I'm sure, kind of a fairly short-ish read because it was in the children's section. It's actually pretty big for being a kid's book, I think. But there's a lot of pictures. Um, the information is definitely there, but it's not like super crazy because again, it is for kids. But yeah, I have always had an interest in magic and in witchcraft and witches and all that fun stuff. Um, and I've always wanted to learn about it and in the past, I did have a moment where I was learning a lot about it, but I've forgotten a lot of it. So, like, because I have trouble with uh, focusing and reading and everything, um, I figured starting <laughs> starting my relearning of magic journey would be great with a kid's book. Get the basics down. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Um, and it wasn't my intention to buy this. I just saw it and I was like, ooh. They also have, the people who wrote this, they also have a natural history of uh, fairies. So I saw that book too. I'm sure they have other books, but the magic one was the one that popped out to me. So that's the one that I'm starting with actually. That's the one that I'm currently reading at this exact moment. I was reading it like five minutes ago. Um, and because it's a kid's book, it's super easy. So why not? The other one that I'm kind of uh, in the middle of reading right now is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. Um, this one is one that I think I saw like on booktube or Book Talk or something, I can't remember. Um, but someone just like mentioned that it was kind of a good book and <clears throat> I really like, again, horror. I like mystery kind of things. I like thrilling stuff. I like ghosts in particular. Um, and gothic horror. I really, really like gothic horror. And so this is maybe a little gothic horror-esque, but also not. Like, I'm not really entirely sure. But it has three different narrators, from what I can recall. Uh, one of them is the dude who lives in a house. One of them is a cat, and the other one is a teenage girl that I think is his daughter. I've only read the first chapter. Um, <clears throat> but there was like a murder that took place. People maybe suspected him, but also don't. He's got some mental weirdness that's happening right now because he seems very attached to his mother who is deceased. He doesn't let his daughter go outside at all. Um, and yet she maybe visits. 
So I'm not really sure. There's a lot of weird stuff happening just in this first chapter. And he keeps like, he was a suspect, like a main suspect in the kidnapping and murder of this one girl. Um, but he was proved innocent. He lives on the last house on Needless Street, I think. And like, he still keeps like newspaper clippings from it and it's like stored underneath and it's hidden. So like, it's kind of weird. There's a lot of weird stuff happening so far. Potentially unreliable narrator in him, but I'm kind of interested to see like where it's gonna go. He also, I think, struggles from um, potentially memory issues because he doesn't remember if he killed her or not. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, that's just what I've gathered from the first chapter. So yeah, I'm interested in this book. It seems like there's definitely some mystery in there, some maybe thriller-esque kind of things that might happen. Um, potentially supernatural things. There's a cat as a narrator, so, you know. Um, another book that I have is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. So this one is supposed- this one definitely sounded like gothic horror. Um, this one and The Natural History of Magic, it, I both got those, like, a couple days ago, I think. Um, this one definitely sounds more like gothic horror. Um, main character's name is Olivia, she has her mother's journal, which has weird ink blot things in there. Like that. Um, so this one does have, like, quite a lot of images and, like, cool stuff in it. I don't know. I think it, it looks like an interesting book. It's probably gonna read like an interesting book too. But I guess Olivia has her mother's journal which has a lot of those ink blots in it and she thinks that they're just blots of ink until she starts seeing things in them. Um, she gets this letter to go to Gallant which is a family manor I guess. Um, even though her mother's journal t tells her not to go there, there is maybe a wall or an iron door or something like that that she's not supposed to open, so there's a lot of mystery and stuff that's happening in there, but it's very gothic horror-esque just in the plot. A woman goes to a manor where strange things are happening. So that's kind of gothic horror-esque. And so this one kind of drew me in. It looks really interesting. There's like two different houses on the cover. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Also on the back it says everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. So maybe that door is a door to like the Upside Down <laughs> or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's on my list. <clears throat> so I started this year reading The Hunger Games and uh, Catching Fire. So now I just need to read The Mockingjay, um, or Mockingjay, not The Mockingjay, but yeah, I gotta read this guy. The reason why is because I also picked up this guy at the beginning of the year, which is like fat. He fat. Look at that comparison. He chonky. He chonky boy. Um, and now they're gonna make another movie out of this, which I think is kind of interesting, but I feel like I don't have to talk too much about this book and like what it might be about, but it's a prequel to to the Hunger Games series. Um, so yeah, because of that, I was planning on reading Mockingjay, like, immediately after and then reading this one, and I think I got, like, a quarter of the way through Mockingjay and then I put it down, because <laughs> that's how I roll. And now I'm going to, um, move myself over here a little bit, so hopefully I can put here some images of the next books that I plan on reading. Uh, so let me open my Audible book. I have Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, um, so that's another one that I have. These are all on Audible. Um, it's 12 hours and 12 minutes, so that's gonna be, it's gonna be a long one, it's gonna be a long one. But the movie's coming out, um, I follow this girl on TikTok and on Instagram whose name, um, is Southern Gothic Dollhouse, like that's their screen name. And she's making a southern gothic dollhouse based on southern gothic tales and stuff. And I really, really love it. I really, really love it. I love the idea. I kind of want to make one now, but for my own gothic stories that I like. And, um, I don't know, it just kind of got me interested in, in maybe starting to read some southern gothic novels. And so Where the Crowd I'd Sing, I figured, would be a good one. I don't know if it's gothic, but it is southern. Um, and the movie's coming out, so... 
Yeah, and just watching the trailer for the movie, I was like, ooh, this is kind of interesting. It's, it's a little dark, it's a little mysterious. You know, I'm kind of curious about it. Um, and then there's also the Twisted Ones, which I think is one of the books that she recommended, because she does on her TikTok page, maybe on her Instagram too, have a couple of videos about the stories and or books um, that have kind of inspired the dollhouse to be made. So the Twisted Ones, I think, was on there by T. Kingfisher, not the Five Nights at Freddy's, the Twisted Ones, which was my mistake. <laughs> um, because when I heard that, all I could think was the Five Nights at Freddy's book, The Twisted Ones, because I read that one first, like, a while ago, years ago. Um, and I was like, how did that inspire Southern Gothic Horror Dollhouse? And it's not. It's a different book entirely. So, The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Um, also on Audible, just for funsies, because I really like Pride and Prejudice and I love Regency, romance, and all that fun stuff. Um, Mr. Darcy's Diary. That was one that I had heard about freaking years ago. That's on my list for if I'm feeling like a like a nice little romance. Um, my Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, or Stephen Graham Jones. I don't know how they want to pronounce that name. To me it's Stephen, but could be Stephen. Um, <clears throat> anyways, that is one. There's another one on my currently reading. I didn't even mention those. So currently, I'm kind of reading Mockingjay. I'm reading The Last House on Needless Street. I'm reading A Natural History of Magic. And I'm also in the middle of the audiobook, The Final Girl Support Group. And um, <clears throat> in that one in particular, I am <laughs> I'm on the part where they're on the freeway. That's all I'm going to say. Um, or on the highway, maybe? I know they're, 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 someone shot themselves <laughs> and they're in a car and they're trying to clean up the mess. Um, and yeah, so I'm there. I remember it because I was like, remember this. Cause I know, I know knowing me, I was like, you're going to forget where you were. So remember this last scene before you dive back into it months later, probably. So yeah, I'm in the middle of that one. I also have Lovecraft Country on here, and like, this was another one where like the TV show kind of got me interested. I haven't seen the TV show at all, um, but just the trailers for it kind of made me intrigued. And so I bought that one as a, an audiobook. And the last one that I kind of want to read uh, for this year is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. And I watched the movie. The movie I thought was really good. It very much reminded me of Scream, but in a different way. Um, I also, that's the other thing with horror, is I really like slashers. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I did watch the movie, but then I started looking things up, so I kind of already know how it ends and who the killer is in the book and everything, because I wanted to know how different the movie and the book were from each other. Um, that being said, I still want to read it because apparently in the book, the deaths all happen like in these people's houses, which is why the title is there. Whereas in the movie, it only happens like at the very beginning and every other death, while it kind of intense for some of them, um, does not take place in a house necessarily. You know? I think maybe one of them. No, that takes place outside. Never mind. Yeah. They don't really take place inside the houses that often. So I am curious about it simply because of that. So I won't have like the surprise factor of trying to figure out who the killer is or anything like that because I already know who it is. Um, and the killer is different from the book and the movie. So kind of spoilers for either. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm still interested in that one. So that's probably the last one that's on my list for this year. So that is my uh, TBR list. I'm really hoping to get it done. My goal, like most of the time, like my big goal, I think is read one book each month. So in that case, I probably won't finish all of these books this year, which I already expect that I, I, right now my expectation for myself is so low that I won't even finish one of these books this year, but I'm hoping I will. Um, other than that, my hope is to try and do one book a month, if I can. And that's part of why I like the audiobooks right now, even though I have a hard time paying attention to them sometimes. 
Um, I kind of like them because it means I can do other things. Like I can crochet while I'm listening to an audiobook. You know what I mean? So I can, I, and I'm the ADHD person who has to be doing multiple things. So like just sitting there and reading doesn't really work for me anymore. Um, in the past it worked really well because of the environment that I was in. So I would escape into books and like now I don't really have that. And that also kind of got poisoned by university. So like that safe realm of fiction is no longer a safe realm. So I'm trying to kind of reclaim that. That's, that's why I'm doing this. That being said, I have like probably 50 books total that I need to read that I own. <laughs> Cause I, I keep doing that thing where I buy them and then I don't read them. So this is me trying to read them. And this is my list that I'm going to start with. Um, if you guys know of any good horror books that you want to recommend, particularly of the gothic uh, genre, whether it's Southern or otherwise, let me know because I'm so interested in them and I would love to read more of them once I get back into reading. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe, maybe that's the genre I really need to start with because it's what I'm most interested in, you know? So anyways, um, that is my TBR. Thank you for joining me on this rambly little video. <laughs> Um, I'll see you guys later in some more video game things. I might post booktube stuff every now and then, but my channel is still going to be predominantly video games. So, I'll see you in whatever that next video is. Bye!